Bishops in Tanzania are snubbing Pope Francis' agenda on climate change. Here to share the good news, Church Milton's Rome correspondent, Dr. Jules Gomez. Jules, why do the bishops, uh, what, what's going on with the bishops in Tanzania? How exactly are they snubbing this uh, Pope's agenda here on climate change? Uh, Brad, the uh, Tanzanian government has launched a massive project. It's the East African Crude Oil Pipeline Project. And the Tanzanian bishops are backing this massive project. Uh, it will bring crude oil from Lake Albert, the oil fields in Lake Albert, uh, in Uganda, to the port of Tanga in uh, Tanzania. And uh, oil will be sold at to markets around the world from this point. And this is the project that Tanzania's bishops, you can see them in the picture there, are saying emphatically yes to. And this is not making the Vatican very happy. So, okay, I mean, they're, they're wanting their people to have jobs, to have prosperity to some degree, to, to function. I can see them as, you know, caring about the, the you know, feeding the poor there and, and whatnot. Who actually is objecting to this project? Uh, Catholic activists uh, calling themselves the Laudato Si movement in Tanzania and in Uganda are protesting this and calling it a senseless war against creation. And Brad, you're right. The uh, bishops, for example, the Archbishop of Dar es Salaam, Jude Rubaichi, uh, has said that this is going to bring prosperity to our people. And he also talks about, he uses, you know, the argument from the environment. He says that nature has given us these goodies. These are natural resources for the good of Africa. Yes, they should be rightly used and, you know, pollution, etc., should be avoided. But if this can happen, what a great blessing it is going to be to our people. But these activists are complaining and telling the Vatican to put pressure on this project so that it will be, you know, uh, it will come to a halt. Okay, well, you know, I mean, prosperity for someone in Tanzania is not like having a, you know, a, a five-story mansion to live out of. It's just having enough food mm -hmm. to feed your kids there. What is, you mentioned the Vatican's getting pressure. What is the Vatican's position on this project? Well, the Vatican is buying into the uh, spiel brought by the uh, uh, eco-activists in Tanzania, and they say it will destroy the environment, uh, create greenhouse gases, you know, deplete the ozone layer. It will, uh, you know, uh, pump poison into over 200 rivers, uh, all, all the usual stuff that we hear. Uh, now, uh, it, uh, recently, just a couple of days ago, there were protests in France because 62% of this project is owned by a French oil company, Total Energies, and a Jesuit priest has gathered an interfaith group around him, Buddhists and Muslims and you know Hindus, etc., and they are upping the ante on the protests in France. Now, as far as the Vatican is concerned, uh, they have become quite close to one of the activists, a lady called Vanessa Nakate, and she came last month to Rome and she spoke to people in the Vatican's dicastery for promoting integral human development. Uh, in fact, uh, this person is being promoted by the Vatican and in 2002, last year, they had a whole spread on her in the Vatican's official journal uh, publication, uh, L'Osservatore Romano. Well, you know, I, I think, Jules, if they wanted to, to, to knock out some of the greenhouse gases, they ought to have some of these activists stop speaking so much. That would take care of a lot of the greenhouse gases right there. Um, did, we, did we not report some time ago, Jules, that many of the U.S. bishops are also poo-pooing Francis' climate uh, alarmism? 
Yes, that was a very interesting story, Brad, because uh, one would not expect this, but uh, a peer-reviewed scientific journal, the Environment Research Letters, uh, talked, I mean, they provided great detail about how um, the uh, many of the U.S. bishops were actually snuffing out the spark of Laudato Si, as they called it, and they were taking Laudato Si very selective and emphasizing only those bits that suited uh, their conservative agenda, so-called conservative agenda, and uh, these bishops were overwhelmingly silent on environmental issues, on climate change, uh, uh, while they were so free to speak up against other issues like immigration, uh, religious liberty, uh, you know, uh, 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 Black Lives Matter, uh, racism, et cetera, et cetera. So this was a very, very interesting take on how even the American bishops, who seemed to be rather liberal, uh, were not jumping on Pope Francis's climate change, climate alarmist bandwagon. Well, there's only so much you can do with that when the science isn't even settled on it. And of course, Laudato Si talked about in our throwaway culture, you know, abortion and other things. And of course, there's closer to the bishops' hearts, or at least it should be. Um, there's there's fresh. Criticism, Jules, from the climate change activists in Rome that the Vatican policy is somehow hypocritical. Uh, why are they attacking the Vatican? Oh, that's something, again, very interesting. Remember, Brad, a couple of months ago, we did a Rome dispatch on uh, three uh, climate alarmist activists, uh, Italians, who were arrested by the Vatican police. Uh, for barging into the Vatican museums and gluing themselves to the sculpture uh, of a Lao Kun, this very, very ancient and precious uh, sculpture. Well, now they have been convicted, and uh, two of them have been given a suspended nine-month prison sentence. Uh, the Vatican has also slapped damages on them. You know, they said they've damaged the statue, the base of the statue, and uh, they have been fined thirty-one thousand uh, dollars. The the activists say they cannot afford to pay that money. They, you know, as usual, they claim to be poverty-stricken, etc. Uh, but the Vatican is not budging, and uh, so the activists in Italy are telling the Vatican, well, on the one hand, you claim to be so concerned about climate change, and yet when we were trying to do this, you're now throwing us in prison and slapping such a massive fine on us. So that's a very interesting development right out of Rome uh, uh, today. It's such nonsense, Jules. I mean, you go in there and destroy priceless art. I don't care what your cause is. And then, you know, you want them to, to, to green light that and, and to slap you on the back and, you know, praise you for it. That's just ridiculous. Uh, you know, the, the take that these activists show. And, and that also shows the mentality. These guys aren't putting out scientific numbers. Uh, mm -hmm. The scientists are all over the map on regarding this. And it's just as many scientists saying all this stuff is, is something that uh, we shouldn't be following whatsoever. Uh, you know, climate change had to be put in because you couldn't say that the, the climate is warming. It could be global warming. It was global cooling. Well, we'll just say it's changing. Well, every day, as you saw in Rome yesterday, the, the climate was changing with the torrential downpours you had last night there for, for all for all that text. But uh, anyway, we, we, we should have learned, I think, as a church to stay out of unsettled science all the way back to the days of Galileo. Uh, and if scientists can't agree on so-called climate change, maybe Rome should do what she was commissioned by our Lord to do, which is preach the gospel. So thank you, Jules, for this story on the good bishops of Tanzania. Well, thank you, Brad. We are just reporting on the new religion of climate change. Thank you.